Welcome back. The next type of collection that we will look at is called a set. So sets are collections of unique values where lists are not. Lists can contain duplicate values. So that's the main difference between a list and a set. A set cannot contain duplicates. So let's just look at a quick um, declaration here of a set. So we will say Europe languages. And let's set the Europe languages. And now the difference also between a set and a list is the curly brackets here or the curly braces. Whereas a list will have your squared brackets. Your set will have the curly brackets or the curly braces. So let's have the European languages here. So I'm going to use Russian. I will use uh, German. Let's use French, English, and there's a few more that we can also use, which we will uh, maybe add later on. Okay, so these are the languages, and you can see it's fine. We can print it out. Let's say print EU languages. Let's print it out. And you can see just as a normal list, it prints out. But I can also add a Russian here again. Russian, Russian. Okay, there we go. And if I run this now, you can see it gives me a warning here that says two elements in a set literal shouldn't be equal. But even if I have it equal, which is not an error, it's just uh, giving you some information. But if I print it out, you can see English or Russian is not there twice it's only once now let's do the same thing for a list so i'm going to say var uh, eu list equals and i'm going to take these values as it is and use it with a normal list and let's print out that list okay so if we print out that one You'll see a normal list will allow you to have that duplicate and that duplicate will actually be part of your list. Whereas for a set, if I add a duplicate, that duplicate will not exist inside of the set. Right. So I'm going to remove that one, but you can see that duplicates are not allowed. Right. So how can we access a value? So we can go to print there and to access a specific value, we can go to EU languages. And with a list, we would have just said, let's get position number zero. But you can see that doesn't work the same for a set, which means that we need something else in order to, for example, print out Russian there. So we will use a method called element at. And if we go to position zero now for the element at and we run it, we will get Russian. So it's a small change. Instead of using the squared brackets there, uh, we need to call element at and then uh, indicate the specific element that we want to extract there. Right, so how can we add a value? We can go to EU languages and we can just call the normal add method as we would with a normal list. And let's add Turkish. And if we print it out again, let's use that same print statement. We print it and run. We will get Russian, German, French, English, and Turkish. Right, how can I remove a value? So I can go to EU languages, dot remove, and let's remove that value again, Turkish. And let's print it out again, run. So in this print statement, we will see Turkish, but now it's been removed by calling the remove method. Now you can also get these other methods just like lists by going and saying EU languages dot first dot last and dot length. And also the contains method works exactly the same as your lists. And you can see first will be Russian, last will be English like we have it there. The length is still four and it contains German because German is in, in the text. If I uh, make it something else, it will say false. All right. So these methods stay exactly the same. Then there's a few methods that is unique to sets. So let's quickly have a look at those methods. And that's basically the union 
union method, the intersection method, as well as the difference method, which is quite useful. Now let's declare another variable, and instead of using European languages, we will use African languages. And the African languages, let's add our own set here again, and the African languages will be Swahili. Uh, let's use Zulu. Let's also use Arabic and French, actually also a language in Africa. So we're going to use Swahili, Zulu, Arabic, or Arabic and French. Now let's see how we can use these methods union and intersection. So for example, I can now go to African languages dot union and let's include the European languages. And let's print out this one. Now you will see this printout basically gives me all the African languages, Swahili, Zulu, Arabic and French. There they are. So exactly like we had it. But then it looks at the union between the EU languages, which means that it's going to look at these and only add those that's not already added. So this list has got Russian, which is not in that list, so it will add it. Uh, this list has got German, which is not there, so it will add German. It's got French, but that one has already got French, so it will not add it. And then it will add English. So the union of the two will basically combine the two lists without having any duplicates. Right, then we can also have, instead of union, we're going to use intersection. And if we run this one, you will see it only prints out French. So basically what it will do is go and have a look at the two uh, sets that you have and look at the things that's the same in both of these lists. In this case, it's French. If, for example, I add Zulu there also, then it's also at the bottom and at the top, and it will give me both French and Zulu. Right, so that is intersection. Now let's look at another one, difference. And run that one quickly. So the difference one, the difference method, will basically get values in the first set, which is AF languages, the one that calls the difference method. So it will get the values in this set that is not in the second set, which is not in EU languages. So it will give us Swahili, Zulu, and Arabic, because French is also in that one. So it will not give us French. Right, and then the last thing I want to have a look at with uh, sets is just the normal for loop again. So I can still use the for in. So we're going to use variable, let's say language in AF languages, in African languages, and then we can still print it out. So I can go and print out language. So let's run this one quickly. And it should now print out all the African languages for me. And there you can see them. So the for loop still works exactly the same as with a normal list. So a set, a lot the same as a list, but it cannot contain duplicate values. Uh, it's got all the same methods that you can use with lists, except for when you are accessing a specific value, you need to use element at. But for the rest, you can use first, last, length, contains, um, and then these three methods is also different where you can use, use union, intersection, as well as difference. Your for loop also works exactly the same way. So that's it for sets. See you in the next video.